Hi everyone and welcome to my course Conceptual Characters. I'm a character designer living in the Netherlands working as a freelancer mostly for feature animation. I started my career many years ago as an illustrator working uh, as a children's books illustrator doing editorial work caricatures all kinds of different stuff uh, slowly transitioning into becoming a character designer for feature animation which I am doing currently. I teach another course here at Schoolism called Expressive Characters. In that course I focus on the expressiveness, the dynamics, the movement, the weight of a character. So that's really drawing techniques. How can you place your lines in such a way, how can you design your character in such a way that we really feel the energy, the acting, the fact that this character is alive. Unlike that course, this course is not about drawing techniques necessarily it's much more about the thought process i've learned as a character designer working for movies that directors really want me to come up with ideas and every drawing whether you are aware of it or not every line you put on the paper is starts with an idea and just like drawing techniques there are steps you can take there are techniques you can learn for coming up with ideas for your character concepts and eventually that's what you'll be hired for because being able to draw is a given that's what it's about but having that unique idea that brings a project to the next level that's really where you become an extra value to the project. So what I try to do in this course is to break down the process into clearly understandable steps that you can use to start developing your own characters. So without further ado, I hope you will enjoy the course Conceptual Characters. <music> So here is an image I drew a while ago and it depicts a situation that maybe some of you are familiar with. Staring at a blank piece of paper and not knowing what to draw. It's funny because I love making beautiful drawings but if you don't have an idea there is really nothing there unless you are making random marks on a paper which is just chaos everything you do with that pencil or, or paint is informed by an idea and very much like you know learning to draw perspective or, or understanding volumes of, or, or color the creative process is also something that you can learn you don't have to wait to get started until you have this inspiration you know you can develop your understanding of the creative process very much like working out and developing your muscles it's really like a muscle and the more often you take part in this process of developing ideas the better you will get at it and the more fun you can have and still you know it's not something that will happen by itself it's it's something that you need to work for and sometimes it it won't work and sometimes it will but there are definitely techniques that you can use to improve your flow of ideas and and get better at it so let's get started and have a look at the creative process it can be divided into four different parts the first part being preparation then incubation, illumination, and implementation. And we will just go over each one of those steps. And I'd like to do that by showing a comic strip that I drew when I, I think I was about 14 years old. It was actually the very first drawing that I created that was published in a magazine. And I wanted to use this because it actually shows this creative process very clearly. So preparation. What you do when you prepare to be creative is to fill your mind with all the input there is. This can be a briefing, it can be a script, it can be drawing illustrations for a book, this can be reading the book. Any input, any information that you have up front of what you are about to work with, you take it in. And here is the image. These are the first two images of the comic strip. This is a little guy who wants to buy roller skates. He's looking at the window of a toy store 
and he realizes that the roller skates he wants to buy they're much too expensive so he can't afford them then he walks on and he slips over a banana peel so this is the information he has you know this is what he wants and it doesn't work and he knows that he just slipped over a banana peel now what I do when I have and this is also part of the preparation process what I do when I have gathered all the input I start associating you know what does it make me think of or what comes to mind with all this input it's also the stage where I start looking for reference because when I associate I think of things and I want to look it up or maybe I have memories or maybe I have experiences that have to do with this so this is the part where it's still gathering all the information not just the input that is given to me but also the input that I come up with so this probably is in the mind of our character you know he thinks of bananas because he just slipped over a banana he thinks of uh, roller skates he thinks of roller skating he thinks of slipping over a banana peel so he is associating thinking of all these things putting all this information in his mind then the next step is to do nothing and this is an important part of the creative process you may have had the experience where you are in the shower or taking a walk and suddenly it clicks you you have an idea for something you'd been working on for the longest time and suddenly it, it clicks and you didn't even work for it you were just taking a walk and you know putting all the information in your mind is really an active process and letting go after that incubation is a passive process this is where you are not doing anything what you're doing at most is going for a walk being physically active or doing something that distracts your mind slightly you know when you do dishes for instance it is something that you have to think of what you're actually doing but it doesn't take all the capacity of your mind so your mind can wander sitting in the train looking at the clouds those are the moments where your mind starts to wander and what happens in this stage is your mind starts combining the elements that you put in your mind before and for all I know creativity the ideas that we're looking for are combinations of things that we already know but the combination is unique and why I think this is true is that if they are all things we we don't know we don't understand what it is if they are combinations of things we know we can understand them but they are combined in a unique way that we hadn't seen before and that's why it's fun it's it's exciting it's new and it also takes a lot of work because these combinations you know the obvious combinations are all known <laughs> that we we all come up with those and it's about finding this interesting combination of elements in a way that we haven't seen before Thomas Edison is credited with the invention of the light bulb in fact 40 years earlier Warren LaRue had already tested the experiment of the creation of the light bulb but when they did whoever was the actual inventor what they did was combining elements that already existed they had glass already they knew how to create a vacuum they had electricity they had metal all the elements were there but what they actually did when inventing the light bulb was combining them in a unique way that no one had seen before and that's the creative process combining elements that are there in a way that is so refreshing that it's surprising it's something new then the next step is illumination because when we combine those things successfully we we suddenly have an idea and this is exactly what I drew in the third image and we, we can literally see the light bulb above his head he kind of skipped the incubation part but he has this idea based on the information that he has and then the last part is implementation because having the ideas alone is nothing yet this course is really about this process that I just described 
but then also the next step. We want to turn those ideas into something visual. We want to communicate our ideas visually, so we need to implement those ideas into actual designs. So looking at the whole comic strip, we see the fellow looking at the skates that are too expensive. Then he slips, small incubation time in between those two images, and then he has this illumination, this idea, and he combines those two elements in a unique way, and suddenly now he attaches the banana peels under his shoes, and now he has his own homemade skates, and he can skate after all. So this is basically the process in one comic strip.